main reasons I originally purchased an Oculus Rift was to play racing sims. I'm a very keen racer and I've spent many a lap racing around iRacing on the PC and Gran Turismo on the PlayStation. I use a custom racing rig and race with the Logitech Driving Force GT Force feedback wheel. When I heard that a set of course that recently had multiplayer added and was available at the knockdown price of €35 Euros on Steam, I had to give it a spin. The first thing you notice when you put on the Rift is just how beautiful Assetto is compared to iRacing. The cars are beautifully modelled and the interiors look spot on. As I rev my engine, Assetto gave me one of those rare moments in VR of making the hairs on the back of your neck stand up hearing the rumble of a powerful V8 or turbo kicking in. The immersive feeling of actually being in the car is undeniable. drawbacks of playing with the Oculus Rift at the moment is the low resolution of the screen, making it difficult to see any details more than a couple of hundred metres in front of your car. This makes spotting your braking point or picking out your racing line difficult, but Assetto has the option of turning on a driving aid which shows you the racing line on track represented by green arrows and red arrows for braking zones or bumps. Having played iRacing in the past, Assetto seems to do a lot better job of working with the current Rift's resolution and having the racing line shown on the track really helps with driving, especially if you're racing some of Assetto's 15 tracks for the first time. Assetto comes with over 35 cars available for you to drive straight away with more coming as DLC further down the road. One of Assetto's greatest features is that you can drive cars from today's current generation like the Ferrari 458 or McLaren MP4 or you can revisit vintage racing by going all the way back to Colin Chapman's Lotus 49 car from the late 60s. Every one of the cars available in Assetto has its own unique handling characteristics that make driving feel like a mixture between the arcade type handling of Gran Turismo and the harsh simulator settings of iRacing. It's a difficult mix to get right but we think Assetto has nailed the handling making it quite enjoyable for both newcomers and experienced racers. One of the major differences which sets apart Assetto from iRacing is that Assetto has a whole single player campaign in which you can set up your own career and race through a variety of classes. The AI controlled cars in Assetto are also streets ahead of the on rails cars in Gran Turismo and do provide a difficult challenge as you progress through your career or compete in special events like drag racing or drift challenges. In a recent update, Assetto has now enabled multiplayer which allows you to race human drivers on any of the tracks with any of the cars included in the game. Joining a game is quite easy and you never have to wait more than 5 minutes to enter a race which is usually made up of a 5 minute practice session, 10 minute qualification session and a 10 lap race however you can set laps and time limits yourself with the server options. I found that racing in Assetto's multiplayer is a lot more fun than driving in iRacing mainly due to the fact that iRacing has a ranking system that only lets you race against drivers with the same rank as yourself. This makes the racing in iRacing extremely competitive and if you're a couple of tenths down on your average lap time in iRacing you will find yourself extremely uncompetitive and eventually on an empty piece of tarmac as your fellow drivers drive off into the distance. Again, the real reason for this is the fact that you can't see too far ahead down the track to spot the all-important braking zone due to the rift's low resolution and this will affect your overall lap times by as much as half a second. Assetto, however, allows you to join any server and you get a wide variety of drivers with varying degrees of driving skill which allows you to be very competitive in some races and hopelessly outclassed in others. Assetto does have some major issues with its user interface that spoils the overall VR experience of the game, the first of which is the starting lights at each race. If you qualified any further back than 10th on most grids you can see the starting line in the game and the UI version is not displayed correctly at all in VR, 
making it impossible for you to get a good start as you have to focus on the car in front of you and you can only accelerate once they have taken off. This is highly frustrating as you will always lose a couple of places at the start of each race and we feel this is something that could have been quite easily fixed. Another major annoyance is how much tracking drift there seems to be in a setup compared to other games. It seems that your view will drift by about 3 or 4 degrees per lap. You can correct this by pressing control and spacebar together on your keyboard to recenter your view, but this can be difficult if you're wearing the rift as you can't see the keyboard. You can set up a button on your wheel to recenter your view, but you first need to download a program like XPadder to achieve this as there is no in-game option to reassign this command. Another small graphical issue occurs when playing multiplayer. The gamers names are supposed to be shown above each car as you're racing against them but this has not been implemented in the Rift version of the game and they appear near the bottom of your view which is a small bit distracting. Overall I love playing Assetto Corsa and it has reinvigorated my inner racer. It represents great value for money compared to the subscription model of iRacing and is a lot more rookie friendly. If you're a serious sim racer then iRacing will appeal to you more, however with the current dev kit hardware you will not be as competitive as you can be, so wearing a Rift for a serious competition is out of the question compared to a 3 monitor setup. If you're looking for a fun racing game with lots of features, great controls and value for money then a set of course is for you. With minor interface issues aside, this is currently the best racing game we've played in the Rift, but with the Dev Kit 2 just around the corner, it will be interesting to see just how much better the overall driving experience will be, and if this will finally make wearing a Rift a viable alternative to monitors for the more competitive iRacing. Please let us know your thoughts on your VR racing experience in the comments below. If you like this review or would like to see more, please remember to hit that subscribe button.